Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Ruthless and its expansion, Ruthless Tall Tales. A game that's, well, the game's out. The expansion's not yet out. Expansion is available for pre-order. Let's cover a bunch of things because there's a few interesting things going on here. So to begin with, Ruthless is a game that is from Alley Cat Games. It's already out. It exists. You can buy this right now. And then there's Tall Tales, which is currently a pre-order, a limited pre-order from my understanding. There's going to be 400 copies per language available currently on pre-order and supposedly not coming to retail. So if you want this, this is your opportunity to check it out. Past that, let's go into this. I'm going to be kind of covering them both at once. And then in the timestamps down below, there will be a list at the end of the video where I'll cover the specific differences, specifically if you are someone who already knows Ruthless, has played Ruthless, and want to see what the expansion adds. Spoiler alert, the expansion adds good things to this game. So let's cover the game. Ruthless is a game that plays out across five rounds, and a good general note for this game, for anyone who's played it or tried playing it or is going to teach your friends to play it or grab a copy for yourself, any of that, the way the game typically plays out is in round one out of five rounds, you sit there and say, I will never be able to do all the things I want to do in this game. I will not even come remotely close. And then at the end of round five, you're like, huh, that game was pretty long, probably could have played even around shorter and I would have gotten everything I needed done. This is a game where the escalation definitely happens as you play, because with this as a deck builder, a deck builder where you start with your typical 10 cards, and then you're going to go, go ahead and draw your hand of five cards and proceed to do things with those cards. The way a typical round, round plays out is you're going to have four actions. They have great players for the game as well. You're going to have four command actions you can take. You take one of those command actions. So perhaps I want to trade, in which case I want to go ahead and turn money. If I had money, I could turn money into actual coins, which I can utilize. That's going to be action one. Action two is you're going to brawl or bury. Brawling is where you play one of these cards over here, and you're going to get rid of one of the cards cards from the center row, or alternatively you're going to bury, which is you're going to weed cards from your hand or discard pile, so either of those. Option three is plunder, giving up two of these cards, and again these little are printed at the bottom of each card. Plundering is going to be giving up two of these cards to draw the top card of the treasure deck and either keep it in your deck, but getting an action you can utilize again and again later, or discard it, getting a benefit right now. So both those are tempting, because money right now can be utilized to do things and further build your engine. On the other hand, putting it into your deck is further building your engine. Those are already decisions you're going to have to encounter. And then the fourth action is going to be boarding. Boarding will not happen in the first round, will likely not happen in the second round, but in rounds three, four, and five, you're going to be boarding like crazy. Boarding is the process of taking the pirates that you have been acquiring throughout the game, and then once they're in your hand, playing them and using, utilizing their abilities. Those are going to be the core actions you take. You take one of those four actions, and then you can move on to there to recruit in the game. Recruiting is going to be the process of saying, once you're done with your core action, you can recruit, and you can only recruit three times per round, but recruiting is the process of paying for one of the pirates, and this is the, the deck building part of the game. You're going to pay for one of the pirates, and you're going to put it in front of you, where it's going to help you this round. You're going to immediately take the ability on the pirate, and it's going to help you in the round you acquire it. So it has deck building, but you get the benefit as you acquire the card already. From there, you can optionally acquire, you can optionally complete any quests or alternatively cash in any treasures. Those are other things you can do in the round. And then once you're done with that, you go back and forth, all the players going back and forth until they're all done with their hands, at which point you go ahead and compete for the end of the round treasure chest or rewards or whatever they are. Competing for the end of the round comes down to creating poker hands in this game. You can have a list of basic poker hands you can create, and it's not like a full poker hand. The basic idea is you have pairs, triples, four of a kind, all of that. You're going to have a straight flush where you have the same suit. The suit's going to be over here. You're going to have different suits for the cards where you have the same suit in the same in the same order, a straight flush. Alternatively, you have a flush, just having from the same suit, or alternatively a straight, and they all have different uh, degrees of how much strength those hands are worth. All that's broken down the cards, fairly easy to follow. The person with the highest suit, the, the person with the highest strength from their suits, is going to get, get, go ahead and get the, the reward for that round. Right now it's set up for a two-player game, so the person will get six strength, the other person will get three strength, assuming they had any strength at all. Now in the first two games, the rewards are simpler. Just get treasure chests, the first two rounds, not the first two games. The first two rounds, you just get treasure chests, it's going to be much easier there. That's because the first two rounds are much more of a general build-up. You haven't had the time to really build up your engine. You are in the process of creating the hands, the deck, what you're going to need. Weeding your deck. Weeding your deck is going to be essential in this game. You're doing all of that. So the rewards in the first rounds are, are not better or worse. You simply, if you got any strength at all, you will get the reward, and if not, not. In rounds three, four, and five, that's where you're going to be heavily competing over those six versus three points. And those matter a lot, by the way. This game, and depending on the player count, depending on what you're doing, depending on how well you play, you're talking about end game scores in the range of 20 to 25 points, which means getting six points is a huge chunk of points. You're going to want to fight and fight hard for those points. That's basically the primary aspect of Ruthless. You're going to go ahead and do that, rinse and repeat for five rounds. 
and that's the game. Few other aspects we didn't really touch upon. So particularly with the treasure chests, treasure chests can be rewarded can be awarded by either uh, getting them at the end of the round or alternatively by accomplishing quests. You'll get them as well over there. And then when you get a chest, what you can do is you can either keep it for a point at the end of the game, or you can cash it in right away for whatever benefits shown in it. Or alternatively, you can cash in two chests to get one of the notable pirates over here. There's gonna be a few notable pirates, one more than the number of players, and you can cash in to gather one of those, putting it in your in your area, taking the abilities in it, and then cycling it back into your deck. They will not count towards suit, but they will add strength to your suits. So that's gonna be one of the things we have over there. We're gonna have these uh, these Kraken over here, these tentacles over here that you can fight. When you brawl them, you're gonna go ahead and take their brawl ability, you're gonna cycle it down, do the ability on the card, and then at the end of the round, it'll go back up, replacing any pirates that are there. Alternatively, you can actually attack them, at which point they get actually added to your area and then into your deck as well. Uh, past that, we talked about the treasures already. We did not talk about these over here. These are going to be the end game scoring. At the end of the game, you can add, you can get additional notoriety points for getting certain goals over here. So, for instance, burying the most pirates or having the most coin cards in your deck. And then you're also going to get notoriety points for various pirates from the various uh, the captains and quartermasters you have in the game, from the legendary pirates and things like that. And that is primarily what is going on in Ruthless. Do that, rinse and repeat, and then cash in all these abilities as you play your pirates. The pirates and the abilities is going to be the biggest thing that's going on in this game from every single time you acquire a pirate, every time you acquire a legendary pirate, every time you play a pirate, constantly cycling them in and out, they're going to be giving you abilities. You're going to want to weed your deck as fast as possible because in a game where there's only 15, there's only five rounds, and the first two rounds are primarily build up, it means three rounds, you're going to want to be cycling through those as fast as possible. The good news is every card you get provides another ability. So you keep cycling, you play a card, you play a card. The first rounds, you'll be lucky to have a few cards in play. But in rounds three, four, and five, there'll be rounds where you'll have like 12, 13, 14 cards in play from the cards you've added to your ship as well as the cards you recruit. Because your poker hand, your poker hand every round is made up of the three cards you recruited. There's a maximum of three recruits per round. But also all the cards you've been playing every single round. So that's another challenge of trying to figure out the best way to get those from abilities that will let you draw cards, abilities that will let you cycle in pirates to the board, abilities that will let you cycle through your discard pile, finding a pirate, adding it to your hand. Tons of different abilities that will let you daisy chain from today and tomorrow in this game. There's tons of just continuous escalation of getting those things done. Escalation round over round as you go through it. The ability is giving you anything from targeting other players to make someone discard a card, discard a coin, to, to, to cycle through, draw two cards, pick one, look at the top two cards of your deck, pick one, uh, burn cards from your discard pile, go through the treasure chest. Every single ability is in here in play. And again, handy dandy player that will cover all those things very nicely and there's a ton of decisions in this game that just the beginning core of it is going to be the decisions around when you get a treasure card do you take the benefit of the treasure now or later now is going to give you a one-time benefit perhaps less so but later later means the cycling through your deck continuously coming up and helping you but also you don't get it now, and so that's a constant trade-off over there. The pirates you get are going to be full of abilities. The pirates are going to be, do you, con do you go for the abilities that will most suit your deck, the abilities that will most suit your playstyle, or are you focusing more on building out those poker hands? Remember those, the points you're fighting over? 18 potential points in those rounds. That's 18 potential points in a game that goes to 23 points might be a winning score. So that's, that's absolutely huge. Do you want to focus on the abilities that will best sequence and combine with everything you're doing? Or do you want to focus on the pirates that will best suit and combine with the various poker hands you're trying to build across this? The game is full of those now and later decisions. And then this further guided by the end game points again. Over here, you have another potential eight points you're fighting over if you most, uh, if you best fulfill those objectives, as well as the various treasure chests, completing different quests. If you have eight money in front of you, if you have four different uh, cards, the four different numbers, five different suits, any of these different things over here that will give you more and more different quests and goals to fight over, giving you all those points. You can gather in this game, you can easily gather seven, eight treasure chest if you play your game well and that could be seven eight points or alternatively do you cash them in to get the benefit now because again that leads to chaining that might get you uh the you might be able to win the poker hand by giving up three chests now that might be a trade-off that's well worth it then again you're giving up three points to get three points but you're denying them three points a ton of decisions in this game and those quests those rewards those all drive everything the take that in this game there's enough take that in this game that it feels like a pirate game there's going to be a variety of cards that will let you attack an opposing player and then potentially also get a coin something like that when you attack a player they discard a card or get uh, give up a coin so the take that is there it feels like a pirate game but it's also not so prevalent that it is annoying or frustrating past well i mean it is annoying or frustrating but it's not it's not overtly annoying or frustrating it doesn't feel like you're being crippled it feels like you're 
going head to head and someone's trying to make you lose coins because it looks like you're currently winning the game. As far as things, oh, and then the art, by the way, I didn't talk about the art, but this is going to be the art of uh, Roland McDonald, I believe, uh, the artist from, from Western Legends, from Rune Nation, from a whole bunch of other games that I'm not recalling offhand, and then obviously from uh, Ruthless as well. In this case, he is both the artist and the designer of this game. As far as things I didn't like in this game, it's really going to be very two things specifically. One is going to be one of the expansion modules, specifically the Cursed Pirate expansion. I talked about the tentacles over here. The tentacles are going to be things that provide you a focus for your brawling and for your attacking, especially if you don't want to attack other players. So it gives you a focus, a benefit to having those in the game. But there's also going to be these Cursed Pirate expansion that one of the modules of the expansion gives you that give you that same focus of attacking or, or brawling cards, but in a way that I didn't find as rewarding, I found more frustrating because these Kraken cards, these tentacles go into your deck and ultimately help you versus the cursed pirate expansion is a similar idea but the cards go into your opponent's deck and hinder them i i like the minimal amount of take that the game has i didn't feel the need for more of it so i didn't love the cursed pirate expansion i like the game far better without it i love the kraken the rat kraken module we'll talk more about those differences but i did not love the cursed pirate expansion and then secondly i would have loved to see some of the suits feel more different in this game because in this game right now it's set up for a two-player game which means i've taken four suits four different suits and created the structure from there and in the game you're going to have a variety of other suits as well each suit is going to have different abilities on them, different ways you can go ahead and combine them, and those suits are both giving you the structure of creating poker hands, depending on the player count, you'll have more or less suits, but also giving you different abilities. That said, while the expansion gives you some suits that very much feel different and focus on what they're doing, I found that most of the base game suits didn't feel as as specialized or as distinct as, oh, this suit has tons of cards that let you pull things to the discard. This suit has tons of things that let you draw. They just have a large variety of abilities, but there was less focus or distinct feeling to those suits, and I would have, would have loved to see that variety in the game. As far as I can see others not liking, to begin with, this game can run longer than what you'd expect, especially considering the lightweight nature of a deck build. I mean, even a two-player game of this can easily run you into an hour, especially when you combine the expansion in there. There's a lot of daisy chaining going on, a lot of sequencing, a lot of going on. You might sit down to this thinking you're sitting down for a 25 30 minute deck builder it is not that this is easily on the low end this is going to be 45 minutes and this can easily run an hour plus especially at higher player counts so this may not be the shorter quick game you are looking for in that sense secondly is weeding is going to feel essential now for myself i love weeding in deck builders i do it whether it's essential or not i like building an efficient tight deck that gives me exactly what i want but because of the shortness of this game, I would argue that weeding in Ruthless, weeding in Ruthless is absolutely essential, and I don't think you can have a viable chance at winning unless you focus on weeding when and where relevant. And then thirdly, there is take that in this game. I mentioned already, I like the amount of take that. It is, to me, it's like Terraforming Mars. It's going to have that aspect of just enough to ping the leader, just enough to be frustrating. But in a two-player game, it's head-to-head -head directly. So you, every time you cripple an opponent, you're helping yourself inherently. But it's not over the top. I never felt in the game that, wow, you completely ruined all my plans. It was, no, I have to expect the fact that you're going to ding me a few times here and there especially as the rounds get longer, especially as I'm drawing more cards and we're both doing more things. That means you're drawing more cards. That means you're dinging me more with your attacking abilities here and there. It never felt overwhelming or frustrating. It felt like, yeah, you're getting in my face a little bit and don't worry, I'll get right back there in your face. Overall for me, Ruthless is a four to five. This is one that absolutely blew me away. I was not expecting this at all. I, I picked up this game and I thought it would be a light, fun, simple deck builder. I did not think that this would provide the the fun daisy chaining that I got out of it. That first round, and in fact, more than that, they, I have a harder time just differentiating how much I like it because of the base game or how much I like it because of the base game and expansion. The reason for that is because I played the base game half a play, realized I was playing it wrong. We weren't activating abilities as we gathered cards. We were just taking the cards and not doing the ability. And that, that daisy chaining is essential to keeping your engine up and moving fast. And then I rinsed, uh, I, I reset the game and then came back to it with the expansion, at which point we got a bunch of plays in with the expansion. Now, the, my initial play of the base game was not complete and played flawed, so we didn't have a good firm picture of it. Combining the two, though, the amount of stuff I do in this game, the amount of daisy chaining, again, I don't know how much of that is, I'd feel if it was base game alone versus how much of that comes from the expansion, but it, I'm just constantly going in this game. It feels so rewarding to build out your hands, to build out your poker hands, to build out your abilities, to have those rounds where you just play card after play card, play card, lets you draw a card. This card's gonna let me click another card from here. That one is gonna let me activate another ability of a card I just played. Everything in this game is just giving you more or more, more and more stuff to do. And then the treasure chest. 
treasure chest. You can hold on to them for the end of the game for points, which will matter, or you can just keep cashing them to keep your engine moving, to keep your engine going, to cycle through those cards as fast as possible. I love that in games. I love that feeling. I love the the, 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 the reward of building such a streamlined deck that just lets me keep on going in this game. And I found it immensely satisfying to do so in this game. Again, don't know if it's expansion. Don't know if it's the base game. I think the expansion certainly helps. It's not a question there, but how much it helps? Cause it's giving you all these extra things. Speaking of which, let's talk about those extra things now. The expansion is going to be adding a few things. It's going to be adding the chests to begin with. So you get the, all these chests and those quests. That's just extra stuff, extra reasons you can do things. It gives you those tentacle cards and those cursed pirate cards, a focus for your attacking or brawling. It's going to give you additional treasures, additional suits of pirates. So it's giving you like these merfolk pirates, which have two different options. You can be a three or a five. It gives you more flexibility there, as well as new abilities on those cards. So you have new abilities, new cards, new suits, new treasures, all of that. It's going to give you those legendary pirates up here. So those legendary pirates up here are going to be another fun way of adding to your engine, of putting something else in your deck that's powerful and they are powerful is going to give you a full solo mode a solo mode that I have not played for what it's worth, so I can't comment on how good that or is or isn't. And that, I believe, is all the things the expansions gives you. Now, that's a lot of stuff. And many of those things continue to add to the stuff that lets you do things again and again and again, which is what I like about the game. Those legendary pirates, those, those quests, those tentacles, all those things are just more stuff that let you continue to cycle the game and continue to keep moving, which is why I'm enjoying Ruthless so much. Uh, this is a game I absolutely recommend you picking up, especially if you like that kind of daisy chaining, especially if you like that engine building that goes on in a good deck builder, Ruthless has that in spades. Lots of abilities, lots of ways to combine things, lots of ways to min-max your efficiency, lots of small tight decisions of now versus later, or this suit versus that suit, or denying versus helping. Many of the pirates, we didn't even talk about this, many of the pirates are going to have two different abilities in them. Do I want to pull back a card from my discard pile to do that, or do I want to attack you and take a coin? Again, lots of small decisions of which thing is going to be the most optimal in this game. I'll throw a link down below. Like I said already, this is a limited pre-order, supposedly not going to retail at all, which means this this and the secondhand market will be your one chance to pick up Ruthless Tall Tales, a game that I absolutely recommend. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and have a good one.